We are studying in the book of James, chapter 4. And God has been showing us what we need to do to honor his word to us. How to get along and let us understand why we're not getting along with one another and with him. And showing us his mercy in the process. We're going to be coming from James chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. It says, submit therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be miserable and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the presence of the Lord, and he will exalt you. Do not speak against one another. Do not speak against one another, brethren. He who speaks against a brother or judges his brother speaks against the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge of it. Let the church say amen. amen. As we come to verse 7, it tells us to submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Submit yourself to God. Why does God want us to submit ourselves to him? Why does God require this? Why does God require you to place yourself underneath him as the ruler, as the authority? Why does he need that? Aren't we all free? It's like parents and children. Parents love their children, regardless of how out of line they may be. They could do horrible things, and the parents are still going to love them. At least I know the mother will. (laughs) Dad is a black and white guy. And in his doing what he do, it may not appear that he loves you, uh, but he loves you. Because sometimes too much sugar in the Kool-Aid Ruins it. Sometimes not enough sugar in the Kool-Aid ruins it. So you have to find that balance. But God says, submit unto me. Submit unto me. Resist the devil. The two are one in the same. To submit to God is to resist the devil. To submit to God is to submit to the devil. I mean, resist the devil. Remember you read in earlier, it's because of pride that we are in this mess that we're in as human beings. Satan decided one day before you and I messed up that he wanted to be like God, wanted to build some comparable or greater to God. That was pride. But God in his mercy allowed him to have the opportunity to establish his kingdom because Satan is not a creator of things. God is the creator of all things. So he allowed Satan the freedom to do what he think he could do. So God created humanity, but gave them a choice on who they wanted to serve. He gave them a choice because he wanted to give Satan a free opportunity to do what it is he said he was going to do. Because God is a creator and he's fair. If you think you have a plan better than his, he will allow you to go for it. But he's going to be right there waiting when you crash and burn. Because he's loving you. He loves you. As any parent should. So he says, cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and weep. Turn your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. In 1 Timothy 6, God the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone is immortal, who lives in inapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see. To him be honor and might forever. Amen. Why does God want us to submit to him? God is the king. He is the ruler. He is the creator. 
He created all things for his purpose. Not yours, not Satan's, not mine, not anyone else. You are a tool, for lack of a better way of saying it. You are a tool that God has created for a particular purpose. These keys have a particular purpose. You cannot take these keys and make them work in your vehicle. The creator of this key created a purpose for it. This key has one purpose and one purpose only. You are a key. You have one purpose and one purpose only. Now, I could try all I want to make this key work in your car. It will not happen. You can try all you want to make your life work, but other than the purpose that God created it, it's not going to work. Some of us have already figured that out, haven't we? Some of us are still fighting to try to make that key work. Aren't we? we look at the key and say, okay, well, what can we do? You say, okay, so what I need to do that, I'm going to have to take a look at this switch. Now, let me take the switch out and see. Now you've gone past your pay scale. <laughs> you started off with a problem where this key won't work in your car, but you do have a key that will work in your car. Your determination to make this key work in your car, now your key doesn't work in your car. Because in your infinite wisdom in trying to make this work, you took the things that were in order out of order. And you broke some things that had no problem until you and your geniusness had figured out a way to make it work. Some of us are trying to figure out how to make our life work against its purpose. And God said, look, I'm telling you, That's going to cause you more problems than you have. You guys know about that, right? Some of you ladies may. You took on a little project, looked very simple. Uh, estimated time of completion. Uh, two, three hours. Four hours. It looked so simple. Until you got into the intricate workings. A two, three hour approximation turned into two, three days. Sometimes weeks. Only to end up, you know, I do not have a clue what I'm doing. I need to call in a professional. The professional comes in and says, look, I need to charge you for the not knowing fee. Because you have created a big mess, more than should be going on for what you need. I'm going to have to undo your mess before I can take care of your original problem. We call that the un unintelligent fee. <laughs> it's to discourage you from doing anything like this in the future. God is like that. He charges you the unintelligent fee sometimes. The price you're going to have to pay to make that work, man, you could have been in Egypt a week ago. 40 years later, time to go in, and you still can't get in because you refuse to allow the professional to show you the way. You was continually trying to make that key that you know was not made for what it's doing. Your body was not made for a lot of things you're trying to make it do. It keeps telling you. Circumstances keep showing you, but you determine, let me tweak it a little bit more. I'm close. I'm close. I just about got it right. And he says, poor thing. Deuteronomy 10, 12 through 22 says, For the Lord your God is the God of gods and the Lord of lords, the great, the mighty, and the awesome God, who does not show partiality nor take a bribe. Curtis, you might be glad you're my son. Curtis, although you're my son, you're the heir. You're just like a child. You're just like a slave. You don't get no more or no less because you are not learning the lesson so that I can trust you with all that's yours. Scripture says he executes justice for the orphan 
and the widow and shows his love for the stranger by giving him food and clothing. So, show your love for the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God. You shall serve him and cling to him, and you shall swear by his name. You see, God's original idea for creating humanity in his own image and likeness was to represent his glory and character before creation. His purpose was to establish a replica of the kingdom of heaven here on earth. That's your purpose. That's why God created you. He created you in his image and his likeness. Your spirit created in the image and likeness of God. And when you look at spirits, there is never a female spirit. It's one. It's always masculine. It's male. So in the spirit realm, we are all the same. But for God's purpose for creating the earth, he created two models. He gave one spirit a male body and the other one a female body. It's like Chevy, General Motors. They make sedans and they make trucks. They have different purposes, but they are vehicles, automobiles, right? So he created us all with a purpose. And the purpose was to work together to influence creation to look like heaven. That's why he created us. That's why when Jesus was here and they were asking how teach us how to pray, he said, pray like this. Our Father who art in heaven. Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. See, the problem when you are not using your body and being about God's purpose, you turn to religion, which is man's way of trying to serve his God. And man is trying to serve God. If you look at religion, it's always trying to get you to heaven. Isn't it? I want to make it to heaven. I can't wait to get to heaven. How long do you think you'll be there? You'll be there for a short moment while God brings down the new heaven and the new earth at the end. He's going to recreate this. He's going to recreate the new heaven. This is where you will be. If this is where you're going to be and this is where you're going to be living, shouldn't you be getting prepared? Don't you think? If you can prepare for heaven, guess what you won't be prepared for? Here. And sometimes we are so heavenly minded, we are no earthly good. For the purpose in which we were created. He's created me in his image and his likeness. That part of me never changed. It became a slave to what you see here. Because of desires that I was sold into slavery to by Adam's decision to serve his human nature with his lust and desires that is only interested in the created things rather than the creator. So there's a distraction. We're more concerned about the created physical things than we are for God. Think about that. Through those years, I wasn't thinking about, oh, my relationship with God. My God. I'm not going to lose my car. Yes, you did. <laughs> are you going to lose such and such? Yes, you are. And the strangest thing about it, I felt relieved. Because that paper looked like it was coming around every other week. The, glam, the glamour wore off after a month. I'm like, you know what? When I get out of that car, I'm no different than anybody else. It ain't like I walk up in the building in the car. <laughs> People had false illusions. Boy, I want to be just like you. I'm like, you really don't? Because they, it's an illusion. It's some kind of false evidence that you have arrived and you have become successful. And God says, whole thing. You just a slave for real now. 
Credit only gets you so far, then it stops. Payments keep coming. Wants keep coming. Desires keep coming. But when you look at being a slave to what you already have, you're like, I so like to get that, but oh my God, I can't stand that. another payment. Matter of fact, they won't even let me make another payment or get in debt on another payment. They're like, look, you might not have enough sense to know, but you have already overextended yourself. You can't see it, but you are a dangerous liability. Now, I know you think you do it, but you can't. If anybody catches a cold in your world, you're done. You know, refrigerator breakdown, car breakdown. If everything you're trying to pay for a breakdown, see, that wasn't in the plan. But it looks so good in the beginning, didn't it? See, that's what happens when you're looking at creative things. They lose their glamour after a while. You know, if you're into a relationship just because they're beautiful young people, are you all are beautiful now? now? Look at your ancestors. See what they look like after they got older. Hey, I'm just trying to help you out. <laughs> you look at me like, just your high school picture. I can't see that coming out of that. <laughs> if I had known that, mm, just a little something to look at. Then you look at those that God sent in your way. You'd be like, no. No. God, I need the whole package. God, I'm looking out for you. <laughs> work with this. Trust me, work with this. It will become what you want it to become. Then you look at them later on. You'd be like, oh. And you like, hey, how you doing? Yeah, you remember in high school? You remember when we was young too? You, you, you act like you, you, you just turned your nose up at me. I even showed you that I was interested. And you just walked all over me. You ain't had time for me. You had to have this beauty queen. The one you married to now. Look at her. You are you tired. Hey, you, that's all right. Isn't it? <laughs> you see? What your human nature would do for you. Fool you. It'll give you what you want up front. Ain't that what the devil do? Yeah. You need that car right there. You need that. That's you. Sit in it. Matter of fact, go and drive it. Take it all day. You come back, I gotta have it. I gotta have it. Two years in, the paint peeling all off. You've seen them around here, haven't you? Good looking cars. But the paint is fading. The paint, I mean, it's a looking new car, but the paint fading on it. See, you can see it. You, if you'd have known that, you said, no, nah, I don't want that. The shiny gone. Now all you think about, I need to paint this. That's what your human nature do for you. It's usually that duck that God sent you away, that ugly ducking. You know, he sends a message to you from Somebody that, sh that, you know, in school, they, they, didn't even know, they wouldn't have known that name if they saw it across the sky. And he'll send a powerful message to you by them. You won't even give them the time of day. Might have been the alcoholic on the street. He says some good stuff, but you can't get past the package. See, that's what the enemy does. That's why God said, look, I got some great nuggets for you, but for you to see them, you need to submit to me so I can open your eyes so you can see beyond what you see. See that heart. That's that heart you need to look and see. When you're blind and following the stuff, you have stuff that's already jacked up, but you let yourself overlook it till you get hooked up. Then you want to know why you do this. You be like, I mean, what you mean? Why? I've always done this. I've always picked my nose in public. I've always scratched and did like this. Why are you acting like you don't know what's going on? Sometimes you were like, you want me to help you? Now you act like something new. You were blind. 
you were blinded by your lust and emotions and desires. Stuff that was right in front of your eyes that you participated in. Now you act like you don't have a clue where this comes from. God said, you need to submit to me. Because I will help you look past those things and find what you really need. Because I have an original purpose for you to look like me. See, I can fix your eyes and your heart where something that was horrible to you will be the most beautiful, handsomest, best thing that you ever could have met. You, you, just, you just wouldn't be able to believe such a thing could exist. And you will be applauding it. And those that are still blind will be looking at you like, who are you talking about? You're talking about Willie. Willie what? I don't know what part of Willie you're looking at, but it's definitely hid from the, to the world. But it doesn't matter. It's what does he look like to you? What does he bring to your world? God said, look, I know I look awful from a distance. I know I look boring. I, I know I may look dangerous. I know I may look mean, but trust me, don't fall for it. Submit to me and let me show you how great I could be for your life if you just submit to me. See, God's original idea for creating humanity in his own image and likeness was to represent his glory and character before creation. His purpose was to establish a replica of the kingdom of heaven here on earth. Because of that, your behavior is critical in fulfilling his mission. To accomplish this mission, humanity needs guidance from God by following God's instructions. See, that's how we got in this mess. It all started with Adam not following God's instruction. And I've discovered in my own life, regardless of what I've been involved in, if I followed the instructions of the one in charge, I've always had great success. I've always had a good relationship with those in charge because I brought value to them. And when I decided I wanted to be the best at what I was doing, they even loved me more. They loved me so much to the fact, not that they loved me because they loved me, they loved the value that I brought to their system. So they would put me to training new recruits. And in training new recruits, because I really wanted to bring value to them, I developed my own operating manual. From, from the time you say, yes, I want to be hired, and you come into this station right here, this, number one, number two, number three, these are pictures I drew out of my commitment to be the best. I just don't want to tell them what they do. I want to give them pictures that I painstakingly drew of the equipment that I was using. I broke down each little part, this part. You know, like you buy those things, it's like, Okay, this part is for this, this part is for that. You put this here and you put that there. You set this here and you do this, and you'll come out with a perfect product every time. They thought I was the best thing since sliced bread. Why? Because I chose to bring value to the one in charge. I chose to create a product that would be beneficial not only to me, but to everyone coming in. I didn't take that manual when I left. Are you hearing me? I want y'all to be successful after I leave, even though you haven't been working your best to make me successful. This is what I do. Wherever I go, I bring value where you're glad to see me come and hate to see me go. That's what God is saying. Look, submit to me. Submit to me. I'm going to show you how to make the best product that you could ever imagine. I'm going to show you a benefit package that can't no one match. All that slaving you've been doing for the other job, they mistreat you, they abuse you and use you up. 
They don't keep their promises like they say. I started off on that job. We were getting at least a quarter raise every year. Don't sound like much now, but back then at $5 an hour, a quarter every year, you look forward to that. Then they bumped it down to 15 cent, 10 cent, 5 cent, maybe this year or next year. They didn't keep their word to me. And I was looking forward to that. God said, look. I got a better offer. <laughs> I got a better offer. You ain't have to work like that. All you got to do is look like me. And not only that, you already look like me. All you need to do is clean the dirt off. You know, like the vehicle? You just keep me washed and keep me clean. I'll do the rest. We can do that, right? All I got to do is keep my car clean. Not Rashad's. My car. Not your car. I can just keep my car clean. And, and we're going to be good. That's all I need from you. I'm going to give you the car. I'm going to give you all the tools, resources you need to keep it clean. And I'm even going to give you a timer that's going to let you know when it needs clean. Not only that, I'm going to give you some power to want to clean it. Then I'm going to give you the power to clean it. How do you flunk at that? He said, I'm going to give you all you need. All you got to do is submit to my way. When you go to the auto shop up there, you know, they, they go to the car wash. They got the tools they want you to need, use. You don't see no buckets up there, do you? You don't see no buckets up at the car wash, do you? Guess why? It's a speedy car wash. They don't want you there with your buckets. Your towels, taking up their time making money, because you're going to stand in the stall and wash not only the outside, you want to now wash under the hood. See, you're not using it for its purpose, and you're causing problems for me that's behind you waiting to come in and looking at you like, I know they, they could have did that at home. But we got a tendency to tweak everything, to try to make it fit what we want, and we don't own nothing. And you go home with all the water you need, all the space you need, and you can't do it at home. Because that's what your old boss taught you. Always be infringing on somebody else's stuff. Make them change so you can get what you want. That doesn't cause harmony. Some gonna let you slide. Some are like, look, don't make no sense. And you know that, they know that. But this is just what I've chosen to do because the, the boss I serve said we take what we want. We take what we want. We don't give. Jesus was not sent here to join a religion. Religion tries to make people do what they want. Religion holds your sins against you, doesn't it? I talk to some people about coming to church. Hey, I'm coming, man. I got to get my stuff together first. How's that work? <laughs> I'm working on it. No, you, ain't, you can't. It's no way. If you could do that, it's no way my dad would have sent his son to take care of that debt if you could take care of it. He would just chose you. Hey, Curtis, go show the world how to do this. You know, you die for him or whatever. But you, look, you don't need me to send about it. You go do it, Curtis. God knew, though none of us love him like that. You're going to get it right, huh? Okay. What about those uh, black market CDs you're selling for your extra money? Hmm. What about these uh, music you hear taken now that people supposed to be making money off? That you, what, about all that? what about that tax return at the end of the year? How many kids you charge, you claim that ain't yours? Hmm? How much of that cash that you made this year? How much did you really put on your tax return? 
Because, you know, God says all of us are supposed to go on there. Well, you can't give Uncle Sam everything. I told you Uncle's fair. <laughs> and he's just. He told me, listen, if you hire somebody for one day, take that money out. Because one day they're going to be unemployed. And guess what they're going to want? Some unemployment money. And we're going to hold a fire to them. Where have you last worked? You know you got paid under the table. I worked down there for Palmer's Cleaning Service. Yeah, I did. <laughs> really? Let's, let's check our records. I don't have nothing here from Palmer's Cleaning Service. How much money do you make working for them? I don't know. I worked for them a couple of years, several months, whatever. Okay. Ring. 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 This is after you've gotten the letter. Because <laughs> you ain't answering. <laughs> Sir, we need you to come in to our office today. We have a discussion about some unpaid withholding taxes here that we have on record that you did not take care of. ASAP, you should be here. See, Uncle, don't play. Sometimes he'll let you go on for years. How much they owe? $200. Right, we'll get them later. But she clock up around two, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000. That's when they call you, and you still ain't got the 50 cents. And you said, look, I would have paid it, but I didn't have it. He said, okay, let's see how much you make here that week. You made $500. You had it. It's right there. It's $500. You had it. Mr. Palmer, you see, you had, there it is right there. You made X number of dollars. Some of that was mine. What you do with mine? You did what? You spent my money. You spent my money, and you're going to sit here and tell me you didn't have it. I had bills to pay. This was one of them. <laughs> this is the first one you paid. That was so comical. Because, <laughs> you know, you got your stuff together. You tell them, like, you know, it's been tight and tight. Things been going, you know, I'm going to get you. He said, look, you take mine off the top, then you ain't got to worry about it. <laughs> I could do that with like, yep, I did have it. <laughs> it's right there. I said, yeah, what can I say? <laughs> they are the arm of God. <laughs> God knows how to put you on the spot. <laughs> well, what's next? <laughs> Looking at your situation, sir. What can you do? <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, this is what we're going to do. Not an option. <laughs> Solution here, you, do. We'll be, in the, we'll be touching bases with you soon. You know, something about that place, you ain't, you, is, you just, it's fearful. Uncle Sam will put you in jail. He will take everything you own. And don't care. Man, you were having kids born every day. We got kids getting grown every day coming into the workforce. You just a little pebble. We will not miss you. But you're going to miss that freedom <laughs> that you're going to give up if you do not take care of us. What do you do with an uncle that knows every move you make? Yeah. You see, Scripture tells us that from the time Jesus came that he preached, repent. Repent because the kingdom of heaven is hand. Repent because a new king has conquered your world. A new king has conquered your world. And now we're getting ready to colonize this world. So did you now start to act like the country of your king? That's why in England, 
you drive to the left. You drink tea. It's about a tea, old boy. That's colonization. You were from Africa. You didn't drink tea. You didn't wear shorts. Okay? Colonization, what do you do? Hey, right, boy, you got a spot of tea for me too, sir? I have on my shorts also. Don't I look like you, boss, captain? Don't I look like you? And so we got the colonization's got all of us trying to look like the master that conquered the world. Isn't that right? Put the three dolls together. <laughs> Which one will your child pick? <laughs> it won't be the one like them. Colonization says I pick that one. That's the beautiful one. Why you think y'all run around with, with blonde hair? Come on. <laughs> really? <laughs> Gold hair. Where, I mean, where in Africa do you find blonde hair? Hmm? Why do you think you're bleaching your skin? Well, I mean, what? What's that all about? Why you want that long, silky hair so you can do this? <laughs> you can't, you talking. It's colonization. <laughs> See how subtle it works? No one came to you and said, look, you need to start wearing. <laughs> they didn't, did they? They just promoted it as the favorite thing. They didn't let you see you on TV. It's called colonization. We're supposed to be colonizing the world for heaven. So we must submit to God to receive instructions from him to know how he acts, how he does things, and we're supposed to be imitating him. And as we are imitating him, those around us start to see it and say, like, wow, you know, I stole for them, and they still act like they love me. Hmm. I don't spend no time with them, but whenever I get in trouble, they there to help me. Wow. So I was working with this guy, you know, and he lost everything behind me. But he's still doing the same thing for other people and still helping me when he needs me. That's phenomenal. You know, when they get upset, they don't curse. They don't want to fight when they don't agree with you. They come apologize. When I do something wrong, they come apologize to me. Like, you know, I really want to apologize for what happened yesterday. But they curse you out. You apologize because your face frowned up. I like to apologize for what happened yesterday. Because uh, my heart won't write. Inside, I have some things going on in my mind that just won't right, and I won't apologize to you and God. They be like, and your friends like, what? They blessed, cause I would have thundered on them. Now you apologizing cause something was going on in your head and mind nobody saw. That's representing heaven. Because that's what God do to you every day. Yes. That's why I said, that's why I paid the sin debt. There's no way if I didn't pay that debt that I could be up here and be at peace with you the way you act. <laughs> so I just took that off the table. Set that over. As a matter of fact, I hid it away. I ain't going to never pull it out or remember it no more. So when you do do something wrong, I can't find nothing to say you did nothing wrong. I don't know whether they did wrong or not. I throw the whole law book away. Let that sink in. He took it and got it off the table. Why are you still operating in it? Why are you still holding people's sins against them? That, that mortgage is paid. How would you feel? You, you done paid your mortgage off and you get a bill every month or every other week. I don't know how often they're getting at you. But every other week you get a, you get a letter like, look, your mortgage is due. You're like, I know I got my receipts. That's paid. And I ain't going to talk to y'all no more. Y'all can call all y'all want, but I ain't asking. But it's something about that thing that you know you done paid it, but have they done the tricky tricky or something? God did not do the tricky tricky. 
He took it out the way. See, that's why you need to be in his instruction, especially if you come out of religion. Religion still got you wearing blonde hair. Still got you, you know, what you do, whatever it is you do or don't do. Oh, my God. Did you see how they were looking? Oh, wow. What that? They got on lipstick. That's a Jersey veil. Oh, my God. Did you see that dress was above her knees? Oh, my God. The Lord going to come down and bring thunder. Oh, my God. What they doing? You see them leaning all over the communion table. See, religion, how you doing stuff like that? You be beating yourself up every day. People ain't even beating you up. You have, God, church, you just trifle. Good. God, how you do that anyway? How you say that? How you think that? Good God, I thought you loved the Lord. You cannot love God. You can't love me until you learn how to love yourself. See, when you love yourself, you won't do nothing to hurt yourself. And repent means change your mind, change your way of thinking. God said, look, submit to me. I want you to see a different way of thinking. I want you to understand what it takes to please me. You don't have to do nothing. Just be who I created you to be. That ain't hard. Just be who I created you to be. Be loving, be kind. See, the kingdom influences environments. I'm supposed to be influencing environments, not with a list of do's and don'ts. It's like I find that little bright spot. And sometimes, yes, I have to pull out a magnifying glass. Like, where is it? <laughs> found some. <laughs> you created in the image and likeness of God. All right? Me and you alike. We just alike. You created in the image and likeness of God. You have the ability to think like God. You have the ability to live a life that looks like God. We got an even playing field now. And you know what? Another thing. You were born as messed up as you will ever be. Yeah, I just saw you shoot Willie. Yeah, I understand. You just shot Willie and Willie going to die. But guess what? You no worse off by shooting Willie and him dying than you were the day you were born. Let that marinate. See, religion says, what's he teaching down there? I'm going to go out there and kill somebody, and I ain't no worse off than I was the day I was born. Well, how were you born then? Okay, you give me some knowledge. How were you born? God said you were born as enemy. You never thought about God. Your heart is exceedingly wicked. It only thinks about doing evil. You can't be fixed. You have no power to get right with me. And you have a one-way ticket to hell. That's the way you're born. Now, name me something worse than that. Name me something. So what's the big deal with killing Willie? What you can do, give me two life sentences in prison? That's what they do. You got two life citizens. Like, you're going to die, come back to life, and then it will give you another life to live in prison. What foolishness is that? What tomfoolery is that? If you were born without hope, no chance of ever having a relationship with God, God's enemy, it don't get no worse than that. You understand? This is the good news. God took care of that. Are you hearing me? He took care of that. If you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, now let me get that back, take that back. If you are a human being, God is at peace with you whether you are born again or not. Hear what I'm just saying. God is not sitting up there, okay, Curtis gave his life to the Lord, so me and him straight. But that Willie, he don't know how many more days he got. Because I'm still angry with him. 
No. God died for the sins of all humanity through Jesus Christ. In other words, just like you were born as messed up as you will ever be, he said, I can fix that. Therefore, whatever you're struggling with, I don't care whether it's lying, cheating, stealing, homosexuality, whatever it is you're struggling with, you do not have to take responsibility for it. It's very important that you understand that. Because religion tells you you do. And because of that, before you give your life to the Lord, you'll be trying to fix up some things that you are never able to fix. And your life will keep slipping by you because you almost got it. You almost got it. But you never will fix it because you have no power over it. You want to, but you have no power over it. The only way to have power over it through accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he said, yes, got you, checkmate. Checkmate, Satan, game over. Humanity is now at peace with me. I'm at peace with humanity. I don't have to zap nobody now. They are off the hook, thank you, my son, Jesus. And I'm going to send them the good news, whether you like it or not. Sin debt been paid. Jesus has taken care of that debt. And if you accept that payment, just like you were born messed up, I will now declare you righteous, and there ain't nothing you can do about it. Say that to me. I am declared righteous, and it ain't nothing I can do about it. Let me hear all y'all say that. Now, just like you used to wear, I'm born a sinner. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. You wore that proudly. Yeah, so I'm just a sinner saved by grace. I'm just a sinner that fell down, but I got up. He knocked me down seven times, but I got up eight times. My God is good. Now you can say, I'm a saint saved by grace. And therefore, because of my faith that I build every day, I cannot be knocked. I will never stumble nor fail. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 12, I believe, tells you, if you add to your faith in that, by following my instructions, by submitting to me, and following my laws, you're good. Because I don't want, I'm not concerned about what you haven't taken care of yet. I'm concerned whether you're taking care of what you know yet. Are you hearing me? You see, the enemy don't want you to know that. See, because this culture is a community of believers living a self-controlled life. That's why you apologize when people do you wrong. Because you discover something about yourself when they did that. You wanted to jab smack them. <laughs> but because you were self-controlled, you said, I won't do it. Who, you talk to? Who was you talking to? That human nature said, look, I've been with you all your life. We've been taking care of this stuff. And haven't you, been, haven't you fared pretty well? Yes. Yes. Now, you have met this new guy that you ain't know that well? <laughs> and he talking about doing it a whole different way? Yes. Talking about apologizing when you know you ain't did nothing wrong? <laughs> you going to listen to him now. Yes. Yes. You are a fool. Yes. And you weak. How are you going to be able to walk around anymore with your head up in the air? You got to walk around like this all the time. Can't look nobody in the eye. We ain't going out like that. Let me have it. I got it. I've been with you all, since the day I was with you since the day you were born. I done took you through tough parents. that didn't have a clue what life was all about. I done took you through a school system that didn't have a clue what they were doing. And I done protected all your great plans that you got planned for when you get out of school. And now, you just gonna kick me to the curb. You don't know him like that. He let his own son die. 
What do you think he gonna do for you? <laughs> All the other folks that follow, look at Paul. They got their heads chopped off. <laughs> Some of them got boiled and boiled in grease. And you gonna follow them. First sign of a cloud. <laughs> you know what? You know you're right. That, that's me and you take care of this. I, I call him when I need him. When we can't handle this, I call him then. And he was like, I'm going to watch the end of this thing. But see, that's the thing you have to understand. Jesus took care of all of that. But the problem is, man was made to believe that God could not be trusted in the garden. That he was holding back the best from him. And he's like, you don't need him. You can do it on your own. Don't you say you got it? You've been seeing you got it since the day you were born. Since the day you were born, look, she thinks she got it. Eating on that dirty desk. Now, look, you know good and well. But she got it. Try to make her stop. Look at she frowned up at me. Look, look, see, look, look. Just heard me say it won't no good for her. What did she do? Stick a tug out and just lick her. See what you think about that? How you like that? <laughs> you the one gonna die, not me. <laughs> but see, that sinful nature make you do stuff like that. You know it ain't no good for you. You know it's been a struggle to make it happen, but you're familiar with it. I know when I do this, yeah, I'll probably get knocked down for about six months, take me to get myself together, but I'm gonna spring back. You be springing back till you're 80. 80 ain't got spring in it. It ain't trying to spring back from nothing. <laughs> it's trying to just roll along with less resistance as possible. <laughs> Remember that false package? You got it. You got it till you ain't got it. Then you look like, oh my God, what in the world? We tried to tell you. See, it was never God's purpose for religion. Religion keeps you in bondage. It hates the word freedom. If I tell you you're free, you're going to the liquor store, the first chance you get. Or you're going back to pornography or whatever it is you struggle with. I'm free? The debt off the table? He ain't going to look at that the same way. You didn't read the whole story. He said, come as you are. He never said, stay as you come. He says, you must change to become like him. For a child will be born to us, and the son will be given to us. And he said the government is going to be on his shoulders. See, we have been put back in charge now. And we are supposed to be governing, and it starts with self-governing. God's will is that you be self-controlled, that you learn how to control your own bodies, your sanctification. He created you to rule, not to be ruled in fear and doubt and the deceitfulness of, of wealth. He created you to follow him. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. Your battle is against principalities and powers, not people. The enemy wants you looking at people, circumstances, and situations. That's not from God. Principalities and powers, the spiritual realm, there are spirits behind every behavior. Whether the spirit of God or the spirit of Satan. The spirit of God is about doing the things that please God. The spirit of Satan is doing what you think is right. Leaning to your own understanding, following the world system. I tell people sometimes, they like, hey, here's this tip, this cash right here, you, you can put it. I'm like, I, I still gotta, I'm still going to put it on my taxes. They are like, are you serious? That's your money. Yeah, I know, but part of it goes to my uncle. He's got a way of finding out stuff. Yeah, you gave me that cash, but you want credit for it. When you write down your expenses that you spent for your house, you done wrote down, I got my carpets clean, and I paid X number of dollars. They want to know, well, who did you pay it to? They lie to you up front. But man is greedy. He wants what he wants. And he does what he does to get what he wants. But Satan is always trying to make you do something that's going to hurt yourself. He give you some, but it's going to cost you more. And so we have to learn how to understand. We don't have to pay that kind of penalty. We can give what we need to give, and God's going to give us more than what we need. But he says you must submit to God's way. 
He says there will be no end or in, there will be no end to the increase of his government or of his peace on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness from then on and forevermore. The seal of the Lord of armies will accomplish this. And what he's saying is, listen, submit to me, I'm establishing a new kingdom. Now, in this kingdom, you need to understand it is not a democracy. You do not vote. Your opinion doesn't matter. I'm the king. The king rules. He dictates how things go but he's going to protect every one of his subjects. He's going to make sure they eat and have plenty and more than enough. Because he wants you to have more than enough so you can pay back into the kingdom. Because that's how he's able to take care of you and do all the things he do, because you pay into the kingdom. It's, it's easier for 500 people uh, to buy a piano than it is for one, depending on your situation. It's less burdensome, let me put it that way. So that's what the kingdom is all about. It's got subjects and it has a king. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, study kings and how they rule. That's a system that's comparable to the kingdom of heaven, which was set up by the Romans through the Greek philosophy and the Roman military power, where when they conquered people for the first time, they didn't take them back to their place, their country to make them slaves. They allowed them to stay where they were. And they would set up a governor. And the governor will teach you how the king looks, how things are done in the kingdom. So since you've been here from Africa, we've been taught how things are supposed to work under this colonization, this colony. That's why, well, I'm not shocked now, but when I used to look at pictures of Africa, I'm like, they got on Nikes. But they are influenced by those that rule the world. Britain, France, Spain, Europe. They conquer the world, people. They don't look like you. And wherever they rule, they've created a culture. And everybody in that culture looks the same. They have the same tendencies. We drive to the right, they drive to the left. We have different foods, different things but you are colonized. And the great fear now is that colonization is losing its authority. That's what the great fear is. That's why regardless of which one you choose in this colonized world, neither one is working. That's why it's to your benefit to come under this new kingdom authority. The king over all of these rulers. The king that dictates what goes on under these rules. He just needs subjects that will work on his behalf to make his presence in this realm legal. Because in this realm, it has to be done through a physical body. That's why Satan deceived the serpent. He had to have a physical body. That's why Eve got, because he had to work through a body. The angels told Daniel, look, God heard your prayer the moment you, you did it. But it's taken me 21 days to get it because the prince that has been given authority over this region through Adam, who has every right to work in this realm, hindered me. We had to fight for 21 days. It wasn't until Michael had to come, was it Michael had to come, the archangel, and help me out. He said, Daniel, the, he said, Daniel, the problem is we can't find no white body in this realm that will work with us by giving us permission to come in and work on your behalf. It's like the sheriff of a county. He has full legal jurisdiction over whatever goes on in this county. No other law enforcement has the right to come into his territory without first getting his permission. That's the law. The same thing spiritually. Spirits are not able to work in this realm unless they have a physical human body to work through, either through influence or through inhabiting. We're God's children. We're the one who has the authority to dictate 
what is allowed and what is not allowed. That's in the principle of binding and loosening and having the keys of the kingdom. I'm going to give you two of those kingdoms today to show you how to move closer to God. And the first one is requires living a life of no known sin. Submit yourself to me. He said, I'm not asking you to be perfect because someone would throw his head. Well, what are you trying to say? You perfect? No, I said the stuff that I know is wrong, according to God's word, I'm on a mission to live it. That's how I show my love to God. How do you show your love to the people that, well, if you don't know how you love yourself, you probably treat them any kind of way. But how do you show love to yourself? By honoring your own values, by keeping your own word to yourself. By looking at your life saying, am I doing anything that harms my body? How can you say you love yourself if you're doing something to yourself that you know harms you? How? And you want other people to love you and you don't love yourself? That's simple. That ain't nothing you got to go, oh my God, what is it? Give me a revelation. What does the Surgeon General say about smoking cigarettes? Read the pack. It'll kill you. What does it say about not keeping your colon clean? Eating a whole lot of meat every day. He says the meat gets clogged up in your colon. And all the toxins that are in it seep out into your blood system, causes cancer. You can't eat that cow every day. Ain't nothing wrong with eating cow. But you got to make sure that cow passes through your digestive system overnight. Do I need to get any more graphic? It needs to pass through what I did this morning. I should get rid of by tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. If that ain't happening, you need to do something to put your system in place. You don't have to learn the hard way. And you ain't got to take no synthetic medicines. There is plant-based stuff out here that'll keep you flush. But it don't taste good to the flesh. Ooh, wee. Looks like you're eating grass. But what you want, you decide. Long life, short and miserable one. It's on you. What am I doing to my body that I know ain't no good for me? You ain't got to go like, Lord, give me a revelation. Give me, tell me some I'm, he's like, look, look at your diet first. Look at all the food. Okay, what does it cause for a good immune system, digestive system, circulatory system, respiratory system? What foods work good for making you as healthy as you can be? Takes a little study. Tell you. So if you love yourself, don't you think that should be the first thing you take care of? You washing everybody's car but yours. You helping everybody with their problems except your own. So mechanic's car is the last thing to get. He just know how to keep it running. Carpet cleaners, yeah, you get to it. You are supposed to be taking care of you. If you love you, God said you can't love God who you ain't never seen if you don't love your neighbor. You can't love your neighbor if you don't know how to love yourself. Because you got to love your neighbor like you love yourself. Hey, neighbor, eat all the cow you want. Eat it five days a week. Oh, I like that fat back every morning and some sausage and cheese and egg and biscuits. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Eat it every day. Good for you or bad for you? The thought of letting it go, how does that set with you? Eat fruit in the morning when you get up. Drink water, get very hydrated. You know, like they did in the garden. That's the elementary. Love yourself. So you have to learn how to require living a life of no known sin. Anything that you're doing to destroy your body, God, he will destroy you because you're the temple of God. 
1 John 3, 3 through 12. Everyone who sins is breaking God's law, for all sin is contrary to the law of God. And you know that Jesus came to take away our sins, and there is no sin in him. Anyone who continues to live in him will not sin, but anyone who keeps on sinning does not know him or understand who he is. He says you won't continue to do what you're doing that you know is wrong because the Holy Spirit will not allow it to happen. That's his job. He said, dear children, don't let anyone deceive you about this. When people do what is right, it shows that they are righteous, even as Christ is righteous. But when people keep on sinning, and let me make sure this clear, when people keep on doing what they know is wrong, he says, it shows that they belong to the devil who has been sinning since the beginning. But the Son of God came to destroy the works of the devil. Those who have been born into God's family do not make a practice of sinning. Practice, that means something that you know and you're doing it over and over. Because God's life is in them. So they can't keep on sinning because they are children of God. So now we can tell who the children of God are and who the children of the devil. Anyone who does not live righteously and does not love other believers does not belong to God. 1 John 5, 1 through 4. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever has been born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. See, I told you, y'all preachers, you just, you just keep people confused. You know, got me all excited. Talking about he done took the law off the table. And done hid it away. And here you go talking about the law. Isn't that confusing? He's talking about the law of love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you love something or someone, you do nothing to harm them or to hurt them. If you love yourself, you will not do anything to harm yourself. If you love others, you will not do anything to harm them. If you love God, you will do what he told you to do, which is to love yourself and love others, because he don't need nothing else from you. He don't need your money. He don't need your time. He needs your obedience, because you're a tool just like that pen, just like this towel. It, it, it has one purpose. But look how pretty it's got pastor on it. But it's got one purpose. Wipe and sweat. All that pretty gold. At the end of the day, Nice color, the royal blue, the royalty, gold and blue. It's got one purpose, keep me dry. But it's so pretty, you're getting it dirty. That's his purpose. You have a purpose to love. Love, simple as that. Love shows and does what is best for the object of his love. Now, I just tell girls, you know, I love you, baby. Yeah, let's, get, let's hook up tonight. We have breakfast in the morning. Now, how can I tell her I love her? Well, me as the head, I'm going to give her to the devil before I even get her. I'm going to lead her to do something that I know goes against God. How can you say you love me and you just gave me right over to the devil? What's going to happen if I marry you? Oh, my God. You see the boogeyman coming, you're going to run and say, come on, baby, catch up. <laughs> what you going to do? If you don't know how to love yourself, you don't know how to love nobody else, and all you can think about is living till tomorrow. Like the guy said when the lion was coming, the two guys was coming. He said, I don't have to beat the lion. I just need to outrun you. <laughs> what kind of love is that? And I saw the picture one time, this guy, he was a great guy. Uh, they were being followed, and, and they were being attacked. And you know, and he was doing all he could to protect everybody. And with this one sneaky guy, he was, he was, he was doing all sorts of stuff to people, right, to, for them to get caught. And then at the end, you know, him, the guy was just him and a guy left. And he was wounded. And the guy was, he said, man, he's like, come on, man, I can't leave you, I can't leave you. So, so he was just helping him along, helping him along, but the danger was getting closer and closer, closer and closer, closer and closer. He done did some of everything to sacrifice to keep this guy safe. The danger was upon him. Guess what he does? He cuts the guy's leg that's been helping him. 
and take off. Leave him for danger, destruction. That's the way Satan do you. Yeah, I'm going to witness to them for the Lord in this relationship. I was in that position with these church folks. You're going to tell me about the Lord, but there's no ring on either one of our fingers. And you won't talk to me about God. You why I don't go to church. You why I don't go. We have a code in the world. Be true to what you're true to. You can't be true to what you want. You want me to have. I got to trust you. Be cutting my leg and let me get caught. In my world, we, we go down with each other. We all going to get a beating today, bro. We just had that. We didn't run. Let's, let's do it together, man. But man, you can have a talk after this. <laughs> you always run to your mouth, getting us in trouble. But we had that code. God said, look, I got a code. I got a code, y'all. I ain't asking you to not do anything. I'm just asking you to love. And ain't nothing going to stir up in you and say, don't love. He said, ain't no law against love. But if I tell you not to commit fornication, it stirs up all sorts of things in you to say, why? Didn't you do it? Let me have my own experience, right, young people? We just warning you. There's a beast out there. God is a powerful God. He's given us all power through the Holy Spirit. But the one thing he tells us all to run from, one, one, flee from sexual immorality. Why would a God that's so powerful giving you the Holy Spirit tell you right here, your best bet, run. Don't look back, just run. Run, run, run. Like Joseph did, run. You might still end up in prison, but run. <laughs> keep it straight with me. You keep it straight with me, even if you're in prison, I'll make a great name for you. Even if you're suffering, I'm going to bless you. You got to learn how to do right in your wrong. God said, look, love me. Do what's right. I've given you the Holy Spirit to guarantee that you will if you truly allow him to come in. That's why it says, don't grieve him. So you don't have no obligation to your human nature. You have an obligation to the Spirit. But if through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live for all who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. Romans 8, 12 through 14. And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he has identified you as his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you, Ephesians 4, 30-32. And in he goes on to say, listen, brothers, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against his brother or judges him speaks against the law and judges it. We know God is referring to the law of love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love, people. The enemy keeps trying to make us pull fruit off the tree. Oh, I ain't lying today. Shh. I went all day without lying. But you ate up a cake. You ate a whole cake today and celebrating your victory. That's gluttony and all that sugar. It's going to kill you. Don't get happy about fruit. He wants you to cut down the tree. No, he doesn't want you to cut it down. He wants you to pull it up by the root. Guaranteed not to come back unless you break a root off in the ground. And eventually some sprouts. But he's saying, look, the law of love takes away 
all of that other stuff. Love, I want you to build a new life. We can't fix that old one. I want to build, I give you a new heart, I put my spirit in you, I've given you all you need, let's work there. Don't keep looking at the other stuff like, look, I'm working on this new life today. What is it going to take? I'm going to show love. Don't say I'm not going to lie. Don't say I'm not going to fight. Don't say none of that. Say, I'm going to show love to everyone that I encounter today. That's it. Show love to everyone that I come in contact with today. I'm going to be a blessing of love. That's God's will, you know. And whatever you ask of God's will, he said, I'll do. Holy Spirit, look, I want to show love to everybody I meet today. You sure? Yeah. But stay woke now. Be conscious of what you ask me. And he'll be gentle. He'll give you a light test first. It might be before you leave home. Don't tell me y'all ain't ready yet. Oh, y'all not ready? How can I help you? What do you need for me to do for you? Come on, let's do it. If we be late, don't worry about it. We'll get it straight. We're going to get it together. We're going to do this together. You got five minutes. The car is running. I'm pulling out. Where's your wife? She wasn't ready. You know I got to be on time. Because I ain't talking about nobody. I got my own experiences. She come running out like. <laughs> you gonna learn. I got a routine. I told you to get up. I fixed breakfast. You were ready. You just kept walking around looking for stuff to do. I'm going to wash the dishes before I leave. <laughs> Help me, Lord. No, she need to know today. I ain't going to be late on the Lord for you. <laughs> I don't need to talk about nobody. Good morning. How y'all doing today? Praise the Lord. Isn't it a great day today? We serve an awesome God. What you doing just getting here? Good morning, dear. How you doing? Glad you made it. Praise the Lord. Let's give all let's give a lot of praise. I'm going to be on time for the Lord. I don't care who. Got to pay. You need to love him like I do. This is can wait till next week. Like they normally do. What's it about Sunday? We got to do house cleaning on Sunday. What's up with this? You can't see? Pay attention. Is that really how love does? I'm showing God love today. God said, hey, you just showed me what you think of me. How you sit there and talk about you love me? And in the same breath, you're not obeying me. Lord, have mercy, Curtis. What am I going to do with you? Be patient. I need you, Lord. <laughs> Give me a chance, man. <laughs> I want to do right. I really do. <laughs> so owe nothing to anyone except for your obligation to love one another. If you love your neighbor, you will fulfill the requirements of the law. For the commandments say, you must not commit adultery, you must not murder, you must not steal, you must not covet. These and other such commandments are summed up in this one commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. How do I want her to feel when she get up and come to church Sunday morning? Do I want her like, praise the Lord. 
So I want to look at me like, you need to sit down. <laughs> you need to stop your tomfoolery. Just a minute ago, you were going to make me walk 12 miles to get to church. Or stay at home and don't even come praise the Lord. What do you want? That's my husband. Preach, pastor. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. The man of God. What do you want? Y'all just don't know him like I do. What you want? Love does what is best. Not what makes you feel good, but what's best best for bringing out the best that God wants out of all his creation. That's what he wants. None of the other stuff matters. He said, you do all that other stuff and ain't doing this, you're just wasting your time and your money. He wants us to show love. Love will take care of everything else. The enemy ain't got nowhere to work at. He's like, shoot. He's sitting there wiggling. Man, I can't find nothing to do in there. Might well move on. He be like, oh, it's Sunday morning. I can't wait till Sunday to get here. <laughs> I can't wait till Sunday to get here, boy. Oh, my God. I can't wait till morning to get here. School, work. Oh, my God. I'm going to have a field day today. I'm going to go. They're going to impact the world for me today. You come up in school. Hi, Jimmy. You go to work. Good morning. You go to the store. Good morning, Howie. Could you just shut up and give me my stuff? Don't impact you influencing the whole world because you don't know the experience of love. That's what he's calling us to do, people. Love one another. Don't want to feel good when somebody loves you? When someone is understanding, like, you be like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Don't worry about it, man. It's good. I'm good. And you so used to being jacked. But look, I just got to do, I got to, it's fine. Chill out. It's not that important. Then you become your worst enemy, but they've let you know, look, that's not an issue here. You mean more to me than that. You know what, man? Look, stuff happens. Don't worry about it. Your relationship is more important to me than anything we got going on. That's the number one command. Well, who knows how great a person you could become if I work at building you up and you become the best that you can be. You know that I'm never going to do anything to harm you. What happens when you're in a relationship where you know they're not going to do anything to harm you? They're going to recognize how raising their voice at you impacts you. Like, oh, God. So you learn to practice a softer voice. You learn that, you know, some people can't stand, they can't handle hurting people or having some people unhappy with them. So you know what? I'm going to make sure this person knows I'm always happy with them. Because that's going to be better for them than me trying to point out some wrong. I want them to always know they could come to me and trust me. That's what love does. Not to be read the third right. Oh, God. Okay. All right. Go ahead and give it to me. I see it on your face now. What? I ain't got no. You're all right. But you know, you could. I knew it. You know what? I feel like not having this relationship because of how you make me feel. He says, stop slandering. Stop accusing people. Some people, don't matter what it is. You know you uh, did such and such, right? Why is that necessary? Why? Why? Some people don't have a life, and they can only get a life out of living your life by telling you what you're wrong and what you're not doing. We're supposed to be about building each other up, taking care of one another. He says, you may think you can condemn such people, but you are just as bad and you have no excuse. When you say that they are wicked and should be punished, you are condemning yourself. For you who judge others do these very same things. 
And we know that God and his justice will punish anyone who does such things. When I'm saying I can't wait for you, when Jesus teaches that he leaves the 99 to get the one, I'm going against the very word and principle of God. That's a key. That's a key. When we're willing to discard people because they can't live up to the standard that we've set. He says, strengthen the weak knees. We just look for, where are the strong ones at? <laughs> where are those that don't need no help at? Where are those that are really in love with God? Where you at? You come go with me. The rest of y'all, whatever. I ain't got time for you. Because I need to be on top of things. I need to be looking good. God said, okay, look, you take all the spotted ones. You take all the worthless ones. Give them, okay, he gonna, look, he, I know him. He going to take all the best, what he thinks the best. But we're going to take what has been classified as bad, unproductive. We're going to take that, and I'm going to show you how I work, because I'm God. Took all the spotted ones, and the man was like, I got over on him. I'm going to keep him a couple more years, because that boy's a sucker. But whatever he did, those spotted calves, man, they come out with all, I was like, what in the world? Now he want them. God said, look, give me whatever, give me your worst, which is all of you. <laughs> give me you. <laughs> and I'm going to show you how I'm going to bring the world to be baffled about you. I'm going to show you what I can do with you, and nobody wants you. But see, after I fix it, they're going to all come and get me. Hey, come, you want to play with me today? See, I know all of y'all could go anywhere from the youngest to the oldest and be a pastor tomorrow. I know that. You all could go anywhere and be a pastor tomorrow. People are like, oh, my God. You dropped in out of heaven. Where'd you get such knowledge from? You want to lead us? Because that's what God does with the spotted ones. Everybody wants them. Everybody sees the value. If I could just get them in my space. So don't get carried away when they come after you. They see the value that you bring to their space. And they want it, not for you. They want the benefit that you bring because it creates a community. It creates an environment that brings goodness in it. And everybody can see it but you. We were talking this morning. You just still feel like you're cruddy. You ain't got nothing going on. You just shame of yourself. And folks are saying, man, I'm seeing a lot of folks say they love the Lord, but you're the only real one I know. You'd be like, what are you talking about? I'm still witness. I mean, God's still all right. You what the world you talking about? Oh my God. But see, you're in it all the time. And you're comparing yourself to the Lord, which you can't shine a light against. But they're comparing themselves to where the Lord has brought you to, knowing that they were there too. And you were there with them. And they see where God has brought you, and they know it's real. They know it's real. It's just like a hospital. Ain't nobody lined up saying, look, can I, what can I find to go to the hospital for today? But you know, you've been paying attention. You about know about all the hospitals out there. And you make it well known. Listen, if I ever get sick and I can't talk, don't stop at this one. Don't stop at that one. You take me straight here. Anybody got it, anybody got it like that? You got a special one you want to go if you get sick? But you have some you definitely don't want to go? The kingdom of heaven is the same way. Ain't nobody kicking the doors to get in. But if I ever want to get in, I know where I want to go. And they come to you looking for advice, looking for help, looking for guidance. They want the outpatient clinic. But that's what it's supposed to be about. Glad to see you come. Hate to see you go, which brings us to our second principle or key. Accept other believers who are weak in faith 
Accept other believers who are weak in faith. God said no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Religion is make us trying to decide who is God's and who's not. God said that is a sin within itself, the sin that has been paid. If you'd have saw me my last two years before the Lord just finally broke me down and brought me in, you would have first said he's insane. Look at what he's doing and talking about the Lord. He ought to be shaming himself. It's a fight. He says, with great struggle that you get into the kingdom of heaven. Romans 14, 1 through 4 and 13 through 23, it says, Accept other believers who are weak in faith. And don't argue with them about what they think is right or wrong. For instance, one person believes it's all right to eat anything, but another believer with a sensitive conscience will eat only vegetables. Those who feel free to eat anything must not look down on those who don't. And those who don't eat certain foods must not condemn those who do. For God has accepted them. Do you understand? It's not about what people do or don't. God has paid the sin debt. And if you confess Jesus as Lord, regardless of how raggedy you may look on the surface, God has accepted them. And the test is, are you still looking at sin or are you looking at love? Or do you even want to see love there? He says, I have accepted them. Who are you to condemn someone else's servant? Their own master will judge whether they stand or fall. And with the Lord's help, they will stand and receive his approval. So let's stop condemning each other. Decide instead to live in such a way that you will not cause another believer to stumble and fall. I know and am convinced of, on the authority of the Lord Jesus that no food in and of itself is wrong to eat. But if someone believes it is wrong, then for that person, it is wrong. And if another believer is distressed by what you eat, you are not acting in love if you eat it. Don't let your eating ruin someone for whom Christ died. Then you will not be criticized for doing something you believe is good. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of what we eat or drink, but of living a life of goodness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. If you serve Christ with this, this attitude, you will please God and others will approve of you too. So then, let us aim for harmony in the church and try to build each other up. Don't tear apart the work of God over what you eat. Remember, all foods are acceptable, but it is wrong to eat something if it makes another person stumble. It is better not to eat meat or drink wine or do anything else if it might cause another believer to stumble. You may believe there is nothing wrong with what you are doing, but keep it between yourself and God. Blessed are those who don't feel guilty for doing something they have decided is right. But if you have doubt about whether or not you should eat something, you are sinning if you go ahead and do it. For you are not following your convictions. If you do anything you believe is not right, you are sinning. You have died with Christ, and he has set you free from the spiritual powers of this world. So why do you keep on following the rules of the world, such as don't handle, don't taste, don't touch? Such rules are mere human teachings about things that deteriorate when we use them. These rules may seem wise, but they require strong devotion, pious self-denial, and severe bodily discipline, but they provide no help in conquering a person's evil desires. The only thing that conquers your evil desires is your love for God. That's it. I'm talking about true love, not being an idea with the idea of loving God, but truly loving God where you sincerely want to please him. Sincerely want to please him, not just for what he has, but you just understand who he is, and you just want to please him. You want to love him like a, like a good parent. That's a child loving their parent. You want to please him. He says, with that desire, if that's truly what you want, I will make sure it happens. 
I want to make sure it happens because that's his will. But if you're trying to hold on to created stuff and trying to love God, you're loving it for the wrong reason, and that's not going to work for you. You're going to continue to sin against God and against your own body. If we want to move close to God, because this is the thing you have to understand. You say, okay, I've, I've, I've shown love, I've shown love, but right here, I can't show love for God right here. That's where you stop your relationship with God at. You won't be able to move any closer until you move that out of the way. Now, you might have a spouse or whatever. I'm going to use spouses, right? And you might decide, you know what? I trust you with everything but my money. Psst. Well, that's where you stop the relationship at. That's a place of untrust. Whatever it is. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I got some things that I do, but I'm not going to let you know this. That's what you stop the relationship at. It's the same way with God. You got a certain level of love for God, but it only takes you so far in your relationship with God and what he has totally for you. You may not know the true love that you could have with your spouse until you have totally surrendered everything and you're totally transparent as one. So you don't know what kind of impact that's going to have on the mind that you're trying to renew by giving that territory over to God, seeing how he changes things. You might think they'll spend thrift, spend thrift and next thing you know, you're broke. He don't spend it all and she don't spend it all. That's because you're leaving God out of the equation. If you keep God in the equation, you know he's fixing things. And when you allow the doctor to come in and start working, it works to cure you. It don't work to make it bad. It makes it better. That's stuff that you can't fix. You don't did everything, so I'm going to just lock you off. That's the only way I can lock you off. I can't change it, but I'm going to just lock you off. What kind of relationship is that? You've got to have free access to everything. Because they know you love enough, you love, they love you enough not to put you in such a situation. And if they don't, your daddy got you. Your daddy got you. I told you I lost everything. But I had to keep showing the love for God. And God has continued to take care of me. So I thought I was going to have to make a ton of money to get that hospital bill paid off. Because that's what the world said. Hey, you owe, it takes a ton, you need a ton, and I have. Uncle Sam, I mean, good gracious, what? And it gets more each year? It was 50 the last time they talked to you. What is that like in three more years? 60, 70? What do you do? I do what I can do. I'm going to love God. I'm going to claim it. I'm going to own it. This is what I can send you. Take it if you want or you said it's a contract. And you do it. You say, I'm going to honor God in my situation. And by honoring God, said, God said, look, let me show you what I can do for you. See, I'm going to just take that off the table. I lie. You know how we do. Because the way I was checking, I wouldn't get no income tax check. You see why they took it and they paid it on the bill, right? So I got one year, I don't get no, I get a little money back. I'm like, is this a trick? Because I know, good gracious, I ain't even what I did in that. So, of course, I don't want to call and wake a leak. Uh, no, I don't want to wake a sleeping dog. That's my friend. Uh, hey. <laughs> then Lord was like, hey. So I'm like, okay, I got I to call. I'm like, look, I'm such and such and such. And you know, I, 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 I. And he said, let me check, Mr. Palmer. They check. He said, no, we can't find 6591. Don't remember that. <laughs> you hear that? I mean, you sure? They said, no. I said, let go away. How far you go back? They said, when we, we went way back to the eon. You can't find nothing. No, your records are clear, sir. Yeah, but of course, you still don't believe, uh, you know what? Uh, somebody ain't half doing the job. You know, they ain't doing what they're supposed to do. And uh, next year, I, go, I get to getting happy. And next time, uh, here we go. I mean, just wiped it. It just disappeared. I'm getting... Tax return checks. I ain't seen one in eons. 
So I don't even know what to do with it, really, when I get it like, oh, should I spin it? Maybe hold on to it in case they find out they made a mistake. <laughs> Go. Oh, God. Zap. None of you know us. Nothing. Who does that? $20, $20, $100 maybe, but come on. Yeah. That's a lot of money in my world. You owe us nothing. And they give me money back. Wow. Hospital bill, like I said, paid in full, considering paid, just paying $5 a month, honoring God. Well, I used to be like, you know what? If I, if I can't give him $50, $100, they don't need something, nothing. I used to think like that. You will save money, man. I can't put in $100. I don't need to try to save nothing. A dollar here, five. Wait, what's, what's kind of saving is that? I used to think like that. Send them what you can send them. Tell them, look, I take responsibility. This is my letter. Listen, I owe such and such, and I'm writing this letter to let you know it. I take ownership of this debt. My total intentions are to pay it. But at this present time, this is all I can do. And when things get better, I will make the proper adjustments. Thank you for your help and your support. Sincerely yours. I've made an effort and I got it in writing that I'm trying to do the right thing. I got to honor God in my situation. I got to honor God in my situation. Are you honoring God in your situation? Regardless of how bad it is, you can still honor God in it. You can still show God love. You can still show the people love. Look, look, I, I ain't a touchy-feely guy. I don't know how to love you like that, but give me time. Give me time. Come on, give me a hook. That ain't real. Hey, look, I got to start somewhere. Look, I'm try I got to practice this thing. I don't know that. I know accountability, I know responsibility, I'll, I'll protect you, I'll be right there, I got that down. I'm good at that, I, I love you like that. But the card, you know, and the, it was like, hey baby, how you doing? I ain't got that one. It don't mean I don't love you, but I just, I don't have it. Do you love me? You know I love you. You don't never say it. You think I'm going through all this? Because I don't love you. <laughs> really? I need to hear it. I love you. What was that? I told you I love you. What does it take? I don't know that. I don't know that. Did you miss me today? You ain't been gone for a couple of hours. <laughs> Did you break, where you eat at today? Oh, I stopped. You didn't bring me nothing. Hey, what's up? You want some other store? I'm loving you. No, I don't want anything. You sure? No, I don't want nothing. What you got? Give me some. Look. I bought enough for me. I asked you, did you want some? I was going to love you. I was going to buy it. I was going to pay for it. That's love to me. Now I'm loving me. I bought me something, and I bought enough to take care of what I need to take care of for me. You want me to go get you some? No, I just want some of yours. Look, what else can I do? Give me a piece of yours. Well, just take the whole thing. Take it. Take it. I don't, I, I, I don't know. You have to learn what you don't know. And you have to be patient when you're trying to teach people. It's to your advantage. Well, you just don't have that kind of love. See, I know you don't love me. 
If I didn't love you, trust me. There would be no confusion. None whatsoever. No one in the planet would be confused if I didn't love you. Because I wouldn't be here. God said, look, submit to me. I know you was jacked up when I called you. I ain't expecting for you to be perfect tomorrow. I just want to know tomorrow you are still committed to becoming who I want you to be. That's all I need from you. I can take care of the rest. You want everybody to be perfect tomorrow. You accept Jesus today and like, oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, yes, God is good. Oh, I just love God. Oh, he's so precious. Thank you, Jesus. I love the Lord. Hallelujah. Yesterday you were a poor alcoholic. Oh, I love the Lord. I've given all that up. And you go out to see your friends tomorrow. Hi. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Have a drink with us. No, you sinners. We don't do that. I, I love the Lord now. I've given my life to God. You should try it. They know you don't kick the monkey that fast. Maybe if you lock yourself away. But you hang around. We believe, we believe that you will take a sip. Just keep coming out here if you want to, yeah? I'm talking about you better get on to where you need to be. We need to accept everybody. It's not about what people are doing or not doing because that had nothing to do with the condition in which they were in. Their situation was they got disconnected from God. Jesus, through accepting what he's done, you get reconnected with God. That starts a process of training, growing you, being patient, because he's not going to change you, zap you. You need to learn the lesson of change, what you had to go through, because you're going to have to show someone else through that same process. That's what I share with you all about what if. I know some of you got some what ifs going on in your head. What if they don't get it in time? We're getting older. The window's small. We could be gone any moment now. I would like to enjoy some other things before that happens. Get that off the table. And just say, like, wow, where has God brought me now? Remember. And, and look at what people around you are struggling with. You're concerned about the toilet paper not being put on right, toothpaste being squeezed wrong, things not being put in the shelf in the right order. You know, clothes don't, they, you know, you got clothes laying here and there. You worry about stuff like that. It's folks that's got their husband staying with another woman, all right? comes back home each day like ain't nothing wrong. And you got to deal with this or leave, and you don't have nowhere to go. And he expects you to be okay. You think you got problems. Are we serious? There's kids out there that have to go through so much abuse at home, it's, it's staggering. And you mad because they told you to empty the trash. Or put that toy down and do your homework. You think you got problems. What about cousin Joe trying to sneak in your bedroom every night and sometimes making it easy? Oh, Lord forbid a daddy or a mama abusing you. And you think you got problems. Well, you got to come home every day and ain't nobody there but you. Fend for yourself. You got drug dealers and people just breaking up in your space, taking what they want, and you think you got a problem. Oh, they won't let me play the game. Why they won't let you play the game? Because I didn't mop the floor. All you had to do was mop the floor. Which, which don't get that dirty. And now you locked off in your room and you don't want to talk to nobody. You think you got a problem. 
Your mom and daddy telling you they hate you every night. You're a mistake. They hate they brought you into the world, and, and your parents tell you how much they love you, and they want the best for you, and you think you got problems. We need to wake up because they won't get free till we get free. We don't want to have the authority over the spirit realm that's causing all that to go on. Until we get free over the spirit realm, we can't help anyone, not even ourselves. Are we good? Love people. The sin debt has been paid. Make sure I get it clear. That don't mean you go out and sin all you want because the sin debt is paid. Because if you do that, you don't love your spouse. And let me break it down before I close. Lord forbid your spouse get in a situation where you all can't have an intimate relationship. You're 35, 40, young in your prime, good, still good, blazing. <laughs> Spouse comes to you and says, listen, I know how it is, so I'm going to give you permission to go out there and take care of yourself. If you're foolish enough to believe that, you don't have a clue what love is. Because love said, through sickness and through death, I will love you. I will do what's best for you. With the power I have, I'm going to ask God to cool this furnace down. Matter of fact, shut off, because there's no need for it now. <laughs> if you're really in love. If you're in lust, it's a different story. Love does what's best, regardless of what it costs you. You sacrifice. You do what's best for your spouse. You do what's best for your loved one. You do what's best for your children. You do what's best for your parents. That's what love, that's the law of love. And God will take care of whatever problem it presents to you. I heard so many people talking about, man, it's cheaper to stay single. Are you serious? In the world, maybe, but not with God. My son got what, six, six kids, went on the way. Y'all already shared that, right? Six one on the way. Young man, look at him. Look at him. Young. In the world, like, seven kids? I can't make it with one. I got a job. He got a job. We both got part-time jobs. How do you do it? Only in the kingdom of heaven. They are a blessing from God. How do you have a baby be out for nine months, and when you go back, you get a $20,000 raise? How did, I mean, who do that? Not only a $20,000 raise, but you get a 15 some percent increase in your salary. The world I come from, they find a way to fire you. You just had one. 18 months ago, you back again? What is it? What, you got a racket going on here or something? You got some kind of racket going on? See, the world fire people like that. They find a legitimate reason. But you definitely too fertile for us. We need you here. And you get how many months off at this, through this time? What's the, what's, the birth, what's the thing? How many days you off for pregnancy? Six months, a half a year. Wait a minute, you'll be going a half a year. We pay. Look like you got something going on here. In the kingdom of heaven, not only do you get blessed, but they are getting blessed. <laughs> See, you ain't just an asset, I mean, a liability. You are bringing great value to the company. They get more accomplished with the little time you there than they've been getting accomplished for the last 20 years. And they know it, where it's coming from. You want to have a couple of kids this year? You want twins? The more you off, the greater we get blessed. Come on, how many more kids, y'all? How many more we got going? What, what, let us know. See, this is what we're trying to get you to understand. God said through, look, I will take care of you in ways that will blow your mind. Love people. If I could just get you to stop, say, look, I'm not going to look at your sins anymore. 
Every time I see something that don't line with God, I, I know something is missing with love. So what do I add here to build this love up in this situation? What do I do? What do I add here? Because they're expecting something that is not love. Love. The law of love. Love the Lord your Lord with all your heart, all your mind, all your body, all your soul. Love your neighbor as yourself. And my prayer is to get this through to you today. Stop beating yourself up because of sin. God knew you were jacked up. He knew you weren't going to change overnight. He knew that. He's not like, oh, my God. Curtis has been at it. How long? Man, he's way behind time. He's, he's, not, he's not on his growth scale. Say you ain't been saying it. You've been, I've been telling you this too long now. I'm going to stop. Let me stop. We're going to hear some music. But I, I had to, because when I looked at the scrapbook the other day, I'm like, what are you, you're so happy here. That's when they were like, this is the same time that letter came. And yeah, that's the same time. Yeah, that's when you lost everything. What in the world? Why were you so happy? God's got a way of taking you through stuff. And you don't even see it for what is actually happening. You're seeing where you're growing at because you're supposed to have killed somebody here. But you're still showing love. Love. Let's hear some music. Let's get a lot of hands.